Welcome to my talk, Moldable Emacs, a step towards sustainable software. Who am I? I'm Andrea, I work as a closure software engineer somewhere in the middle of the UK, and I inherited my passion for Emacs from my PhD supervisor, and from that moment on I got in a synergy with it, and you can learn more about my interests and my Emacs adventure at ag91.github.io. So, let's get in the talk. Why Moldable Development? There is too much information to read it all. Reading is very difficult, it's a, it's a very slow activity, you need to go word by word or paragraph by paragraph if you speed read, but anyway, you, you take a lot of time to absorb that information. And we urgently need to stand on the shoulders of giants, so the idea is we should stop doing always the same error and we should be able to absorb as much of the good idea that the bright people around, around us generate. Uh, for example, if I create a, ma a magnificent program in uh, COBOL and nobody knows anymore how to learn read COBOL and in order to read you take a lot of time, well, that man fantastic idea should be easily translatable to, uh, to C or to Clojure or to Common Lisp or the language that will come after. The idea shouldn't be lost in a code base somewhere in, in a in an old mainframe. It should be still accessible. What, let's get in practice. What does this mean? It means that, um, for example, the, the proponents of moldable development created this slide to give a sense. So the idea is, look at this. What is here? So you will see that all these little things look like the same. The first time I looked at it, this was looking like a class diagram. Um, this is actually code. It's, describ it's describing little system and if you look and if you read you can see that there is a numerator, a denominator. So this you see it's interactive because it's code, it's something that is running and it's an object because this is small talk of Faro, uh, a dialect of small talk. But in the next slide, since this is a moldable tool, you can see that you can there, there is a representation of the same software in, in a new human way. So for example, uh, here you can see there is a mathematical formula, the other object, the second one, was a file system uh, kind of thing, and the third one was an image, and the last one was a sort of a graph. So you can see that uh, uh, there is a better way to learn, to, to distinguish, to intuitively get a, a, a sense. And there is not only a single way, it's a custom according to what you need. So for example, this is a very general way to understand what is this object about, but maybe you want to see some other little things, for example the documentation of the code, because you are interested in developing with it. And or for example an image, you can see it as a path on the file system, or as an X, hexadecimal representation. You understand, it's, there is not only one view, you, you need to have the view that you need at the moment, and the, your tool needs to make this easy for you. So. Um, why moldable Emacs? Yeah, I wanted to bring that idea of having multiple view representations of your, uh, of what you need to understand better in, in Emacs. And so I want to create immediate storytelling. Immediate because it needs to be very quick. And storytelling is because you want to have a connection from something that you needed to develop it in something new. So you are really telling a story. So what is this mathematical formula I created because I need this or uh, this denominator and denominator produce this number. So this is um, a story that you are telling in my, in my mind. And, um, and I want multiple views for buffers. Buffers is the main concept in Emacs. And so buffers are um, what I want to integrate in a story. So I create a buffer, then I start manipulating it, creating a view and then another view to in order to tell something to, to myself in order to learn but also to tell something to others. So for example let's start from a news case, learning better. I had um, at work a list of changes for a, for a pull request, so a code change and I was very tired, I couldn't understand what this match text was about so what I generate, I created a view for myself to understand it easily. And for me, understanding it easily, for example, was a little uh, uh, flow diagram that showed me, okay, there is first this, this, and this. You understand? And so I could follow having it uh, next to, to, to the change. 
having this image next to the change. And this is describing uh, a, a, an Italian recipe for uh, pasta with butter. So if you want to try, you, you're welcome. It's very uh, uh, tasty. Um, anyway, the other thing that we can do is query text, uh, structured text. So for example, we are in an org, this presentation is an org mode buffer. So when I call a playground, that is one of the modes that lets me write some Elisp to query the original uh, buffer, uh, if I evaluate this, um, you will see that I have just asked my org mode buffer to tell me the content length of the headings with some interesting content. So th all the headings uh, were of third, of thir of third level. You understand? I have just asked uh, a, a file to tell me its contents without reading it. Um, or we can do something similar for code. Uh, we can do tell I don't know but I don't have no idea what is written there but I want to know which function is the most complex uh, or is over complicated and I have uh, defined in red so again I don't need to read the number I don't know either what is about so I've, re I've written in red that that I've shown in red the, the the function with more complexity and I can jump to it so everything is very accessible to facilitate my operation and my understanding. Um, or I can take notes. So for example, I can annotate something uh, and you see the notes is again structured text because you, you will know that I'm gonna query my notes at some point. And for example, I can show all my notes, uh, of, for example, by mode. Um, or I can show all the notes by mode in, in org mode because as being a tech, uh, a structural text I can manipulate it very easily and so these are all my notes um, and uh, and the other and finally the superpower of this mo of moldable Emacs is the fact that you can compose molds so for example let's go in uh, showing all the all all my notes let me show you all my notes and then say that I want to know um, how they are, uh, how many lines have these notes. Look, this is the this is the answer. So of all the notes I take, I can actually query and say what are the ants, what are what is the what are their length. But let me show something more. Which one is the longest note? And now there are a lot of notes in there, so it's difficult to know. But what if I can, in a click generate a view that is very immediate. Look, there is a note that is very long, it's 30, about 35 lines. Do you understand? I didn't read any note. This is all coming from uh, being able to query uh, your text and having multiple uh, representation. Okay, so my, my presentation is very short. So what is next? Next is to integrate uh, my the great molds with uh, other software like Code Compass. I did a presentation last year and I want to make those nice diagrams available for small molds uh, so that you can use them, for example, for notes or text that you have. Want to uh, integrate better with Next, the common list browser, because there is a lot of opportunity there to, to make funny things, a browser uh, accessible for molding. And then having some interaction with small talk with, through Glamorous Toolkit so that we can have the best tools, Emacs and Glamorous Toolkit and Nix and others to, to work together to make our learning easy. Then uh, you have seen that all my molds that uh, I have shown are, were basically by, by buffer. I want to have project statistics. What about, give me the complexity of all the functions uh, in, in a project, of all the paragraphs or whatever. And then there is a nice issue on uh, my issue tracker for moldable Emacs is about Emacs. Tell me how can I compose the molds that I have to, to make new things. Um, and it is a sort of a research thing that is pretty cool. So if you want to learn more, just uh, check out ag91.github.io, uh, check out the moldable Emacs on GitHub and uh, enjoy the, the rest of the conference. Bye.